Hello, I'm Tom O'Dwyer, head of the Signpost program, and during this video I'm going to share with you some of the latest results from our Signpost farms. We have found in working with the Signpost farmers over the last two and a half years that significant progress has been made by the farmers in adopting the climate mitigation measures recommended by the Chagask Marginal Abatement Cost Curve. We also believe that signpost farmers can make significant further progress through the further adoption of additional measures. And finally, I'm going to show in this presentation that the signpost farmers have a lower carbon footprint than that reported for typical Irish farmers. Uh, and that's because of their usage of the mitigation measures. So to recap, the Signpost Farms program is a network of 125 uh, Irish farmers who act as demonstration farmers. All the major farming enterprises are represented, including dairying, uh, suckler beef, dairy calf to beef, sheep and tillage. Advisors work with our signpost farmers to support the farmers in the adoption of climate mitigation measures. And those same advisors also work with the farmers to share the experience of the signpost farmers with other farmers. The signpost farmers are also involved in research projects, including as, as per this photograph here, the National Agricultural Soil Carbon Observatory, uh, which is a network of carbon flux towers. So a number of our farms are involved in that project. And we are also collecting data from the signpost farmers to allow us report on their performance and their greenhouse gas emissions. And it's this data, which has been collected by colleagues in the National Farm Survey, that I'm going to report on in this video. Earlier this year, Chagas published its marginal abatement cost curve. This is the, the agricultural marginal abatement cost curve. There are 16 measures that are recommended to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. I have highlighted a number of them in, in yellow on the screen. And these are the, the measures in yellow are the ones that I'm going to primarily report upon. Uh, and the other measures, uh, some of them are not yet available to farmers, uh, but they, they are proven to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. So our focus in the signpost program has been in encouraging and, and supporting farmers to adopt the measures that are highlighted in, in yellow. So starting with the, 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 the results from the signpost dairy farms, uh, we have figures for 2021 and 2022 for the signpost dairy farms. And we also have for comparison purposes, typical uh, figures from the National Farm Survey, which represent the typical dairy farmer. So what we can see on the screen here is that on our signpost dairy farms, uh, about 50% of the fertilizer nitrogen implied was in the form of protected urea. Um, they spread 0.86 of a tonne of lime per hectare farmed in 2022. Both those figures are significantly ahead of the, the figure reported for the typical dairy farmer. We can see that the signpost dairy farmers have really embraced the low emission slurry spreading technology. They've made big efforts in 2022 to reduce their reliance on chemical fertilizer, a drop of 17% in their uh, usage of fertilizer nitrogen in 2022. 48% of the area farmed by these, this group of signpost dairy farms is, is under clover. And uh, uh, the signpost dairy farmers are achieving a long grazing season, approximately 20 days longer than is reported on typical dairy farms. Also on these signpost dairy farms in 2022, we saw a, a small increase in the area farmed, an increase in uh, cow numbers, and, um, and also an increase in milk sales. So putting all these figures together, what does it mean in terms of greenhouse gas emissions? So on this slide, we have summarized uh, the changes in greenhouse gas emissions in, in three different categories of emissions. So starting from the top, we have emissions associated with fertilizer nitrogen usage and the type of fertilizer nitrogen applied. And on the signpost dairy farms, because of the changes made by the dairy farmers, this greenhouse gas figure fell by 2%. Uh, th as I've already said, the usage of lime on the signpost dairy farms increased. Uh, so that led to an increase in greenhouse gas emissions uh, of 0.5% in 2022. And finally, in terms of livestock units, uh, I, al I also said there was a small increase in livestock units and this led to a 1.3% increase in greenhouse gas emissions in 2022. 
So putting all that together, we can see that the em total emissions for far uh, the signpost farmers in 2022 was 938 tonnes of carbon dioxide equivalent in total. And we can also see down here just at the bottom of the screen at the moment uh, that uh, the carbon footprint for milk produced on the signpost dairy farms was 0 0.92. And this carbon footprint figure is lower than the figure uh, reported for the typical dairy farmer, which was 1.06 in 2022. Moving on to our uh, signpost cattle farms, and we have 35 farms uh, in this category. Uh, this includes both our suckler uh, beef farmers and also our dairy calf to beef farmers. Uh, similarly to the dairy group, we have 2021 and 2022 reported. And for comparison purposes, we've included the National Farm Survey figures for 2022 from the typical cattle farm. We can see for the cattle farm, signpost cattle farmers, there was an increase in the usage of protected urea in 2022, and it's significantly ahead of, of the levels of protected urea used by the, the typical cattle farmer in 2022. Lime usage also increased and is above, the, almost double, the amount typically used by cattle farmers. Um, these group of farmers have also embraced the low emission slurry setting technology and have made big efforts to reduce fertilizer nitrogen use. 82% uh, of their farm is under clover. Towards the bottom of this slide, what you can see are some figures relating to the age at finishing. And what these figures are showing is that on the signpost cattle farms, animals of all categories, that is young bulls, steers and heifers, are being fi finished at younger ages than is being achieved in the, in the overall cattle population with young bulls being finished at approximately 16 months, steers at about 24 months, and heifers at between 22 and 23 months, on average on the signpost farms over the two years. And putting all this together then, what does this mean for our signpost cattle farmers in terms of emissions? Uh, because of the change in fertilizer nitrogen use, we saw a 2.5% reduction in emissions. Because of the increase in lime usage, we saw a 1.6% increase in greenhouse gas emissions. And because of the increase in livestock units on these farms, there, uh, there was a 5% increase in greenhouse gas emissions. Overall, uh, the total emissions 437 tonnes of carbon dioxide equivalent uh, on the farms in 2022, which was an increase. And in terms of carbon footprint, it's 8.8 .8 kilos of carbon dioxide equivalent per kilo of live weight. And this is um, a reduction on 2021 levels and also is uh, below the figure t reported for the typical cattle farmer in Ireland in 2022. Moving on to our sheep farmers, we have less signpost sheep farmers. We have a group of seven farmers reported here. Again, the same types of technologies are reported. There's about a 20% usage of protected urea as a source of nitrogen. There's a, an increase in the usage of lime uh, and it's also that usage of lime is also much higher than is reported for the typical sheep farmer. The usage of low emission slurry spreading is uh, a little, little lower than for the previous two groups of signpost farmers, uh, but that's because of, I guess, the nature of the slurry or manure produced. And also uh, we can see that this group of farmers, the signpost sheep farmers, also took steps to reduce their usage of chemical fertilizer in 2022. So what does this all mean uh, for, the, for the signpost sheep farmers? We, see a five, we saw a 5% reduction in emissions due to changes in fertilizer nitrogen use. We saw an increase in emissions due to lime usage, and we saw an increase in emissions due to uh, livestock units on the farm, an increase in livestock units on the farm. Overall, the emissions on our sheep, signpost sheep farms were 242 tonnes of carbon dioxide equivalent and with a footprint of 10.2 kilos of carbon dioxide equivalent per kilo of live weight uh, gain. So moving on to our final group of farmers, which are our signpost tillage farmers. There are nine of these, and again, we're reporting figures for 2021 and 2022. Um, we have a 60-40 split in terms of area farmed under winter crops and spring crops. Uh, we see that protected urea as a technology wasn't employed at all in 2021, but 26% of the nitrogen was spread as protected urea in 2022. Again, uh, our tillage farmers made big efforts to reduce their reliance on fertilizer nitrogen, 
and that's largely as a result of um, a 25% increase in the tonnage of animal manures imported onto the tillage farms. So that's a significant change. And then towards the bottom of the slide, we can see some figures which uh, are important in terms of, uh, for tillage farmers, in terms of uh, building up the amount of carbon in the soils or the level of carbon sequestration. So we can see that 20% uh, of the area farmed was, um, uh, the straw was incorporated on that area. Uh, we had um, uh, between 25% and 17% of the area under cover crops and we had uh, up to 12% of the area uh, farmed, uh, used for legumes. So they're just some of the figures from our signpost tillage farms. And what does that mean? In total on our tillage farms, the emissions were 117 tonnes, uh, and that worked out at 0.9 of a tonne of carbon dioxide equivalent per hectare farmed. Just a very brief word in terms of some of the other measurements we're taking on, on our farms. Uh, so we start with some figures on the left of the, the slide here. Uh, we see a colleague from uh, Johnstown Castle in a soil test pit taking some samples for analysis for soil carbon. In the middle of the slide uh, you have the photograph of the installation of the carbon flux tower on the m signpost farm of Sean and Pat Barry in County Limerick. And on the left of the slide here you have some images of a drone and uh, we have employed a company um, to uh, gather data using a drone uh, relating to the amount of carbon in our hedgerows and in our trees. So I haven't reported any results from those measurements in this video uh, because we're still gathering data and analysing the data, but I expect that in future video presentations I will be able to report on um, the data that's uh, produced from such measurements. So, what are the next steps? Uh, the individual signpost farmers have uh, received an individual report uh, and our advisors are working with the farmers to try and identify areas for further improvement or to try and identify where mitigation measures can be employed on the farm. So we want to optimise the use of available uh, mitigation measures on all signpost farms. We also want to seek to deploy further uh, climate mitigation measures and the example that I give here is uh, the deployment of methane reducing feed and slurry additives. Uh, these products are very near to becoming commercially available. They have been uh, tested at research level and in the next 12 months we want to deploy these technologies on a number of our signpost farms. We also want to continue to demonstrate uh, um, and share the messages from our signpost farmers with many more farmers. And the final point I'd like to make is that we want to move to integrating the measures that were uh, uh, taken in terms of soil and soil carbon and in terms of carbon in our hedgerows and trees. We want to integrate those measures with the results which I've presented earlier in the video. In summary, I believe that our signpost farmers have made significant progress over the last two, two and a half years in the adopt option of marginal abatement cost curve measures. That said, I also believe that uh, there is scope for the further adoption of more measures uh, on the signpost farms. And finally, I, uh, because the signpost farmers are demonstrating that they can produce meat, milk and grains with a lower carbon footprint than that is reported for typical Irish farmers, I believe that the signpost farmers can show the way forward to uh, a lower uh, greenhouse gas uh, emissions future. <music>